Hello and welcome to a brand new video version of the A View From The Dugout podcast with myself, Chris, from Surrey on the Budget. And I am joined with my co-host, Russ, from Scotland Surrey. Russ, how are you doing today, sir? I'm all good, thank you, Chris. Excellent, excellent. Breaking new boundaries. Oh, exactly, new frontiers. I, you know, I think uh, this is looking a little bit better than our trial one. So what we're going to do today, guys, we are basically looking at covering off a couple of teams from the Scottish Premiership. We'll do a series of these to to rattle through them all. Um, we are going to start right at the top end of the alphabet, but we're not going to have to order because we're weird. So we'll start with Aberdeen, Russ. And uh, I believe you've got some details on Aberdeen uh, from last season and this season. And we'll we'll have a look at some key players and things like that. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I think we'll rattle through that and then maybe come up with some players to for everybody to look at. Um, Aberdeen had a Good season eventually last year, um, ended up third and with that have obviously qualified this season for guaranteed European football. They started the season but hit and miss, they got beat a couple of times um, by four goals by my team, Dundee United, who were eventually relegated and they got beat 4-1 by Rangers. But in between that, there were three or four really high scoring games. Uh, St Man 4-1, Livy 5-0, Kelly 4-1 and Hibs 4-1. So they were a bit hot and cold up until the World Cup break. Before they fell apart after Christmas, uh, a double trip to, to Edinburgh, um, where they shipped five to Hearts and six to Hibs, and also the, the cup shop, uh, cup shock, Chris, to Darville, which yep. ultimately cost Jim Goodwin his Aberdeen job. So, yeah, a bit, um, bit of a sort of hit and miss season for them, but they finished the season really strong. Yep, finished third in the league, and um, I don't think anybody had that, at, you know, just post-Christmas, um, especially after that Darville result. I don't think anybody had them finishing third, but they went on a great run. Um, Barry Robson came in, took over, and really kind of nailed it. Um, standout players, I guess, from last season, Russ. I know you've got the the Opta charts um, and what have you, and I think, obviously, I think one of the standouts would, would likely be, without uh, looking at them immediately, would probably be Leighton Clarkson and Duke, players like that. Yeah, your 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 sort of top sort of four or five were Leighton Clarkson, who was on loan from Liverpool. He's now signed permanently for Aberdeen, of course. Great um, just shy, just shy of nineteen hundred um, total up to points for the whole season, which is a pretty good number. Um, sort of sixteen, seventeen hundreds, the sort of the higher end of the average in Scottish football. But Clarkson, Duke, Ramadani, who unfortunately has just left Aberdeen, um, signed for a hundred thousand, but has left for I think it's. Uh, reported 1.2 million, Chris. Yeah, with Something add-ons. Like and uh, I just got a notification on my phone that he's just been subbed out by Lecce and they're uh, friendly against Kiddy. So there you go. Ah, right, OK. <laughs> he's um, and then Bojan... with him anyway. So there we go. Yeah, straight into the team. Um, and then Bojan Miofsky and Kel Roos were the, sort yeah. of the other one standout. So from that, you've obviously got a couple of key things there um, that helped and resulted... I know that you could probably speak a wee bit about Kel Roos, but just on the goal scoring side, um, Bojan Mioski got 16 in the league, Duke got the same, and Leighton Clarkson got five. All really good numbers and, and sort of decent. Clarkson obviously weighing in heavily with the assists as well, but I think maybe the negative for Aberdeen, for the sort of certainly reflecting, would be the fact that there's lack of goals elsewhere. I think Graham Shinney got three, and the rest were only one or two. Um, so it was a real sprinkling of uh, sort of goals. Um, not really sort of, you know, too optimistic on that adding to your decisives, et cetera, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, and that's it. And I'd, I think uh, Mayofsky is a card that I owned and owned last season. And it's one that you're either going to get a goal from and get, you know, a nice 60, 65 points, or you are going to get a thir- you know, between 30 and 35. Uh, he doesn't get a great all-round score. Um, doesn't seem to get much, you know, much involvement in other things. So I think that's that's one that I would look at there. You know, is all or nothing. And I think if you're not getting the goals as they didn't get yesterday against Livingston, um, I think I ended up with about twenty six points off him, which is no mm-hmm. use really. But uh, you know, fine. Well, he's a goal scorer, so he could well get back on the on the the trail. So, um, obviously Aberdeen going to have European utility, which means they'll have midweek utility right the way through, um, up until Christmas time. So. That another bonus for their players, so that probably has a wee bit of a reflection in prices. Um, but is there any cards that do stand out to you, Russ? I know, obviously, like Mayovsky, Duke, uh, Clarkson would probably be the key ones. Um, is there any other lads that kind of catch your eye? I know I've 
I know we both have uh, Angus McDonald at the back, um, yeah. currently out with an injury, but is there anybody else? I think you maybe mentioned one, Graham Shinney. Graham Shinney, I think, yeah, he's, um, his rare card's coming in around about £45 at the moment, which is the Good price value. of Nicky Devlin, who was out with the Old Firm, one of the, the best right-backs in the, the league, probably over the last two seasons, to be fair. Um I think those cards, basically, if you're looking at maybe potentially a, an Aberdeen stack, maybe perhaps without um, the superb Kel Roos, um, whose numbers would have been higher if it had it not been for injury last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, um, that was, that's a definite. I mean, I think um, when I was looking at the start of the season there, um, he was one of the highest scoring goalkeepers in all of Serie um, for the last 15 score. Um, I imagine that's probably the same now because I think he had, well, he had a clean sheet yesterday. It was nil-nil. So. Yeah. It's probably still the case, so um, bit of a more expensive one, but probably undervalued if that makes sense, um, just because of those scores. Yeah, the Leighton Clarkson, obviously, he's, he's he's relatively pricey if you were sort of looking at Aberdeen stacks and things. But I, I think if you were looking at trying to get a sort of rare five together, Devlin, McDonald, and Shinny will cost you about one hundred and ten pounds for all three. Um, Depending on if you want to play with one or two strikers, your striker options at the moment, Miofsky and Duke, both goal scorers, both get assists. Um, Miofsky a little bit cheaper at 110 for the Rears at the moment, Duke 180. But I think all five of those players, I think it would be safe to, safe to say that you could certainly recommend them. And in the limited version, I think you can get them all, including Roos, Roos Clarkson, Duke, and probably any of the defenders there for about £100 for the whole team. So not bad value there if you're going to run it over the season. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And they're going to have a lot of utility. They're going to have a lot of utility. They're probably going to have a core of players that are going to be weekend and Thursday nights. You know, there are going to be that core of players. So mm -hmm. um, ones to definitely look out for on that one. And I think Aberdeen should have probably have a good season again. It'll depend how they manage that squad. Um, you know, we've seen with Hearts last season, they didn't manage it quite as well. But this time around, I think Aberdeen are probably going to be wise to that and and probably manage that squad a little bit better. They've um, they've made quite a few signings as we as we both yeah. know. I think we've uh, maybe mentioned before on podcast. There's quite a bit of money coming in Aberdeen. Um, obviously they've had the sale of some players. They had some add-ons from last season, including Calvin Ramsey. They've got obviously add-ons from McKenna staying up with Forest, and roughly probably safe to say maybe four or five million guaranteed from the the European football crust. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically what Hearts got. So if they uh, if they can't progress out of the group stages, they're still getting a, a cash bonanza, which for Scottish mm. teams, that is huge money. You know, it really is. It's huge money. So um, I, I don't see Aberdeen regressing. Um, you know, I still see them being probably a top four team. I think that's probably fair to say. Um, yeah. I think, I think it would probably be my top four would be Celtic Rangers, Aberdeen and Hearts, whatever order you want to put them in. I'm not going to debate that just now, but that would probably be those ones. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. Aberdeen, lots of good players and plenty of utility. That's my key message for those ones. Yeah, just a, on a final note, um, final question, just obviously they've made quite a few signings that don't have cards in the game. Any in particular that you're maybe going to keep an eye on for uh, release? Um, To be honest, i Probably not at the moment. Um, obviously, they did bring in, you know, they've got uh, Ordadia, uh, who came mm -hmm. in. I'm, I'm not Slobodan so much Ruzovic, of... maybe. Who, sorry? Slobodan uh, Ruzovic, I think you pronounced uh, yeah, it. Yeah, the, the new defender. defender. I think they kept referring mm -hmm. to him as Ruby on, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> on, their, own, on their own social media stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, if Ruby gets a card, um, yeah, perhaps. Imagine if you had Ruby and Duke. That seems like, that. That seems like a great combo, Ruby and Duke. Um, it's like a cartoon, cartoon, cartoon network. Exactly, like exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I, at the moment, I'm not necessarily, but I think I've already got a couple of their key players, and um, hopefully we get a couple of breakouts moving forward as well. So Aberdeen, pretty much, probably stick with the old faithful. Yeah, I would at the moment. Till we see where they're looking. Eh? I mean, you've got it's, it's early doors, but you know, okay. there's a core group of guys there that are going to play every week, like Shinny and things like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so without further ado, let's move on to your team. The only Dundee Premier FC. team in the city of Dundee, um, okay. and that would be Dundee FC. Yes, you're right. Um, we have obviously we, we don't have the same depth of 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 stats on Dundee. Um, obviously newly promoted, uh, won the league last uh, championship last season. Uh, on the last day of the season, not necessarily as uh, you know as 
concisely as we probably would have preferred. Um, but we've, we have come up, uh, appointed a new manager, Tony Doherty, for, um, and we're now sitting with you know, 12 new signings, Russ. So um, the cards that are in the game, uh, there are a lot of red crosses still because a lot of the players left the club. Um, but there are quite a few players there. And there, I've got a, I've got three now, I think, all defensive ones, including the goalkeeper. Um, but I'm I'm quite keen to see some of the other ones come into the game. Um, but is there any... I know there's one key sign, and I think it set the uh, Serer, uh, or the Scottish Serer uh, community a little bit of light recently, and that was obviously Trevor Carson. Um, yeah. Is there any signings that you've seen there, Russ, that uh, catch, catch the eye? Yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Obviously, with me being a supporter of... Of course, your rival. So me being Dundee United and you being Dundee. Um, if I take the sort of tangerine glasses off and look at your, your your club, I think you've got a couple of really good young players. I think you've got a couple of players that on their day um, will be quite good. So the, the young players that I think are really quite good are Luke McCowan. Um, I think yeah. he came from Air. Was that right? Yeah. Air United. Yeah. 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 So Luke McCowan looks quite good. Look, I've only seen um, what was on the Viaplay Cup. Uh, but I thought he looked quite quite direct, so I think he's obviously going to be quite good for you. He got the um, assist yesterday for uh, for the goal as well. Yeah, Lyle Lyle Cameron, obviously. I know that you're very excited about him. Um, he does look a decent player. He's obviously had a wee bit of um, Scotland uh, recognition at sort of the younger age groups as well. Mm -hmm. So I think those two players, I, as you know, I will not sign probably <laughs> any Dundee players, but I think those two from your sort of the youth side of things. Um, Trevor Carson, you, you you hit the nail on the head. Um, we obviously he Trevor Carson's ex Dundee United, of course, and we sent him out on loan to Morecambe, didn't use him, and then had uh, an absolute nightmare with uh, the goalkeeping department, which ultimately got us relegated. I firmly believe that we probably would not have been relegated if we had kept Trevor Carson and used him rather than using Birgitte and okay. Carl Johan Eriksson. Um, who and you know I thought Carl Johan Eriksson was a wee bit better than Berigiti, so I think Trevor Carson will be a major sign. And obviously, I did a wee swap deal with you so that you could you, you could get him you there did. just in the midweek. You did. Uh, do you know what it cost me? Uh, uh, one of my teams a decent score because I ended up with DMP <laughs> because he didn't play the weekend and, and uh, Ross Laidlaw did. But do you know what? Um, it's it's we spoke about it before on the pods and stuff. Uh, it's wanting to use your own team's players now. Had I used my two defensive players in my cap 40 team, a uh, 240 team, I'd have hit the threshold um, because Joe Shaughnessy, who's now the club captain, you were picking him up for 12 quid. Um, and I believe that, um, I think it's Pavel Trader who's got the cheapest ones on the market. But even at right. that, they're still only 21 quid. Um, he scored 56 points yesterday. And that mm -hmm. was without a clean sheet bonus, which I think's pretty solid, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and Lee Ashcroft as well at the back. I've got both those cards. Uh, Ashy got uh, 48 points and I think there's not so many of his cards available um, I think I picked his card up for literally peanuts um, but the, the cheapest ones on the market are 69 quid that's not worth mm -hmm. that um, but the, the the limiteds are about 60p so <laughs> and that is, that is definite value but Luke McCowan that you mentioned he's obviously got cards there as well Players that I'm excited to get cards. Um, obviously one would be Lyle Cameron. Um, was in the team of the year. Um, for last season. Um, young Charlie Riley. Um, we picked him up. Uh, from Albion Rovers. He was one of the four players nominated for the Scottish Young Player of the Year, along yeah. with like uh, Leila Bada and players like that. So, uh, he's been out injured, missed the entire preseason, which is typical Dundee. But um, two players, Russ, that I've got uh, English Premier. A league uh, pedigree. You've got Owen Beck, left back, on loan from uh, Liverpool. You know when you watch a player and you can just see their different gravy? He's one of those. You can tell he's been, you know, playing underneath uh, Andy Robertson. He's very much an Andy Robertson type of player. Um, plays in that kind of mould. Very, very, very talented youngster and we're absolutely extremely fortunate to have him. I think he'll get some decent scores in him. And the mm -hmm. other one was Malachi uh, Boateng, who we've got on loan from uh, Crystal Palace. Um, he knocked in what would have been a 61 score yesterday. So, And that was with no decisives. That was just his 35 for starting and 25.5 points. So actually 60.5, but Serea showed as 61. So a couple of, you know, players from bigger clubs that we've managed to get in on loan. Um, and just, yeah, I think 
those are some boys that I would definitely keep an eye on. But overall, I think there'll be a few surprise performers in Dundee. Trevor Carson, um, I think, is worth 10 to 12 points for the season. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough to get us into kind of like ninth, 10th position. So 10 all with all I want. <laughs> you know, anything else is a bonus. <laughs> but 10th, avoid the playoffs and avoid relegation. And I'll be a happy Chris. Mm -hmm. Any players that... Um... Just to kind of summarise, so from the either the existing card pool that's on Surair, which I know is obviously really limited due to the loans and things mm -hmm. like that, but any any cards where you maybe think that you could um, turn a profit or maybe say, for example, cards that like you think you've got very little DNP risk? Um, Joe Shaughnessy, without question. Um, if you're getting him for 20 quid and he keeps sticking in scores of 56, uh, you're going to get great value out, uh, out of a player like that. Um, mm -hmm. He's the club captain. I don't see him not playing. Lee Ashcroft will be the same. Um, I don't see him not playing. And um, I'm having a look at the others there. Luke McCowan, he is. Um, a, you know, I had three players all roughly on the same score in my predictions on play sharper um, mm -hmm. for the right wing back position, and they went with him. Um, mainly because he's not a right wing back; he's a winger, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is why I didn't think. But. I, I, those are the only ones to be honest that and obviously Trevor Carson he's going to be the number one he didn't play yesterday um, due to missing pre-season entirely um, because of his fallout with St Mirren because he didn't play against Rangers on the last day of the season when his family had come over to watch him <laughs> maybe a, a slightly meagre reason to, to fall out of a club having just signed a new contract but anyway we've, we're fortunate to have him and I do think he's going to be worth worth those points so yeah Trev Shaughnessy and Ashray would be the three that I would say right away. Um, mm -hmm. And then when the new cards come out, you know, you could definitely look at other boys. Like I say, Beck will play, uh, Boateng will play, uh, Tiffany maybe in and out, uh, Cameron mostly should play. And then you've got Zach Robinson up top. Um, he would be one that I'd look to get a hold of as well. But that's mm -hmm. my club. I, I will end up with a couple of their cards because I do want to have you know, the fun of watching your own team. They did cost me 40 quid by equalising yesterday, but that point could be precious. Indeed it could be. And um, obviously the sort of final sort of thoughts are that obviously Trevor Carson has, um, is going to be rocking up at his, uh, to play against his old club. Is that your next game? Yeah, yeah, away as well. So an away <laughs> game to the club that he basically uh, refused to go back to um, after that. So it'll be very interesting. I don't think he'll get a warm reception. I think Joe Shaughnessy will. Um, mm -hmm. And Trev will get a, a very hostile reception. So, um, and then, you know, I, I he's a professional. He, he's had worse probably. So um, I think we will we will see where that where that goes. But I I don't think there'll be an awful lot out with the old firm games where we're taking fives, fours and fives with a keeper like that. So I think that, yeah. that makes a big difference. So. So there's Aberdeen and Dundee. Yeah. Given a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a summary, um, I've also got a couple of statistics and things, and I know that you're going to be sending me over the bits and bobs for the Dundee page, which I've not uploaded yet. The Aberdeen page is live; it's got the old Opta stats and things. Um, I think the plan is we're going to obviously look to just wrap up roughly about here, but we're going to do another couple of clubs um, tomorrow, and we'll get everything basically wrapped up and uploaded for the week. Is that? Yeah, I think we'll plan? just try and get through them as 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 best we can, and um, yeah. Keep an eye on Twitter. We will post them on there when we're, when we're uploading them um, along with the links. And uh, yeah, give us your feedback. You know, drop it in the comments below. Um, you can obviously get me on Twitter at Surair on the Budget and you can get Russ at Scotland Surair. Um, but with that, guys, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, Russ, for helping uh, kickstart the series. And um, yeah, we'll speak to you all again soon. Take care, guys. Cheers.